This is one of the cheapest gaming PCs that we've been able to put together in a very long time over here on the channel. This is coming in right at $300 and it's totally possible to build something like this right now and it might make sense for a lot of people out there given console prices and GPU prices right now. It's also super easy to put together and I'm really impressed by the performance this thing's putting out. I actually wasn't expecting what we're going to be seeing here in this video. And this isn't the first time we've taken a look at a PC like this, but this is the first time we've kind of paired these all together. What we've got here is an HP Pavilion TG01. It's actually the first generation, I believe, comes with the Ryzen 5 3500. So with this, we get six cores and six threads. That's really the only thing that's going to be holding us back here. But so far through all of my testing, it's actually held up pretty well with the GPU we're going to be using here. Now, I've got a lot to go over in this video, but before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. Okay, so here's the system we're going to be using. And there are a few things missing because I picked this up on eBay used. Usually has kind of a hard drive bracket over here on this side, something I probably wasn't going to use anyway. This came with 8 gigs of RAM, just a single stick, so we'll need to upgrade that. These come with a 400 watt power supply with a single 8 pin PCIe connector. So we've got a lot of options when it comes to GPUs. And over on eBay, I was able to score this TG01 with no GPU, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD for $150 shipped. There's also an upgraded version that usually comes with something like a Ryzen 5 5600, which will perform better, but given the price point here, I couldn't pass it up. Since the PC I picked up didn't have a GPU pre-installed, and the 3500 doesn't even have an iGPU, I needed something to put in here. And about two weeks ago, I picked up a Radeon RX 6600 non-XT over on eBay. I actually used it in a SteamOS build recently. So that's the card we're going to be using here. And I also wanted to add a little more RAM. And DDR4 is really cheap right now. I just picked up a 16 gig stick over on eBay for 19 bucks. You might even be able to find it for cheaper. Mixing the 16 gig stick with an 8 gig stick isn't going to hurt performance at all. They're both running at 3200 megahertz and it's still going to run in dual channel. But now we've got 24 gigs for this system. You can always pick up two 16 gig sticks and bring it up to a total of 32 gigs, but I wanted to save as much money as possible. And this only has a 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD, so it doesn't leave us with a lot of room. I'm actually going to be using an external hard drive for my Steam games, but now it's time to install the GPU. Like I mentioned, we've got that ASRock RX 6600 with eight gigs of VRAM. It's a non-XT variant. And that 400 watt power supply with this should be plenty. The CPU is only going to pull up to around 70 watts and that's maximum there. The TGP of the RX 6600 is around 120 to 130. And mainly when we're gaming, it's going to be around 100 watts. So we've got plenty there with that 400 watt 80 plus platinum power supply that comes pre-installed in this system. ASRock always adds really huge coolers to their GPUs, but luckily this does fit. As you saw, we got to kind of angle it in, but it's not hitting anything and it sits in here nicely. We'll go ahead and boot this up. We've got that green light up front and these TG zero ones, at least the older ones, like the one we have here came pre-installed with Windows 10, but I've upgraded to Windows 11. I need to get some drivers installed and make sure everything's functioning properly. And then I'm going to move over to my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. So getting right into it, like I mentioned, main thing I'm worried about here is just the fact that we've only got six cores and six threads. If we had a CPU here with six cores and 12 threads, we could do a bit better. You know, having that multi-threading would definitely help out in newer games. But uh, as you can see, we've got that Ryzen 5 3500. I think we're still going to see some pretty decent performance. 24 gigs of RAM because I didn't want to buy just an 8 gig stick. I figured we'd be able to upgrade this just a little bit. And of course, 
we've got that AMD Radeon RX 6600 non-XT, 8 gigs of VRAM. And to give you an idea about this 3500's uh, TDP, I've got it listed right here. We'll go ahead and stress this out up to 70 watts. And while gaming, we're probably gonna be around 60 watts there. But another thing I wanted to do here was just uh, up the GPU performance a little bit. We can do it pretty easily. I'm actually not gonna be doing any overclocking with it. What I'm gonna do is just raise the power limit. And with this ASRock 6600 from Afterburner, or you could use their app, power limit will go up plus 20%. So it's gonna draw a little more, but uh, we can expect higher clocks here. And with that out of the way, first thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks. The first one we have here is Geekbench 6. We're coming in with a single core of 1,591, multi 6,148. Not too bad for 3,500, but let's just take a look at something like a Ryzen 5600. With that, single core is up to 2,030, multi 8,297. Now, it might not seem like a huge jump, and really, when it comes down to it in Geekbench, it's not, but the 5600 is using newer architecture, and when it comes to gaming, it is significantly faster than the 3500 for sure. 3D Mark Steel Nomad, we got a total score here of 1,538, 15 FPS with that RX 6600. So it's not looking great here. But the final one I ran was 3D Mark Time Spy, we got a 7,574. And I can tell you, this 3500 is holding the RX 6600 back. This is the only CPU we have in this system, so now it's time to see if this thing can handle some real world gaming. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. We're at 1080 high settings with FSR set to balance. I'm getting an average of around 76 FPS. And I'll tell you right now, if we had a 5600 or a 5600 X in this, we could see averages in the mid nineties with it. Right now, this 3500 is holding the 6600 back. And if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see our CPU utilization, the Ryzen 3500. We're anywhere from 91 to 98% utilization. So it is kind of showing its age here, but we're still seeing a decent frame rate. Here's Spider-Man 2, 1080p, high settings with FSR set to balance. And I really thought that it was going to kind of fall on its face with this game, uh, just given, you know, how much CPU is needed for this one. Now, if we went up to Ultra, we'd be pegging that CPU at about 100% all the time with this game. But at high settings, it's definitely manageable. We're seeing averages in the high 70s, and we could get a lot more out of it by using frame generation. I'll just show you here. We're at high settings, 1080 FSR balanced. Now we're going to enable frame generation. And if I built this PC for, let's say, two grand, I'd be kind of disappointed that I needed to use frame generation on a game like this. But since we're working with a $300 PC, I'm totally fine using it here. And now we're seeing averages over 100 FPS. Borderlands 3 did pretty decent, but there are some stutters here and there when there's lots of particle effects on screen. 1080p, high settings, DX12 back in here. Not too bad. I mean, it is playable like this, but again, once you get a ton of stuff going on, you'll see it kind of dip down to the low 60s. Older titles like Doom Eternal are going to perform really well. We're at 1080p ultra settings, and I could probably go up to Ultra Nightmare, see an average of around 80 FPS with it. Because with it set up like this, we're over 100 FPS, and it's playing super smoothly. Marvel Rivals is another one that I wanted to test here. We're at 1080 high with FSR set to balance. Not getting the kind of frame rates that I'd like to, but we're over 60. We're actually seeing an average of around 74 FPS, and we could always take it down a bit. Going down to medium will net us around 90 FPS on average. And finally, Oblivion Remastered. 
I can really tell that the CPU is struggling with this game. We're at 1080 high settings with FSR set to balance. And if you take a look at Afterburner, in some cases, this does dip under 60. I know for a fact that at high 1080 with the way we've got it set up and a decent CPU, this RX 6600 can get us an average of around 70 FPS. So we're gonna need to enable frame generation and with this game, there is some ghosting, so that's something to definitely keep in mind. It's not as prevalent on a DGPU as it is an iGPU, but it's still noticeable in some situations, even on this setup here. But it will take that frame rate way up for us. So overall, for the price, given everything that's going on right now in the GPU market and console market, it's not a bad deal, but I wish we had a little more CPU power. Luckily, the CPU in the TG01 can be upgraded all the way up to the 3700X, but prices on those are still kind of high, so I'd say a good option here would be the 3600. And with that, you get some extra threads, six cores, 12 threads, so we can offload some of that over to the threads, and we would see better performance in everything that we tested here. If you're interested in seeing a video like that, let me know in the comments below. Need to check the prices of those 3600s right now, but I don't think they're going for that much. Either way, I'll look into it to see if it would be worth doing the upgrade, but that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I'm gonna leave links to everything I used here. Remember, you gotta keep an eye out on eBay. You might have to bid on some stuff or just wait it out a little bit. But with a little bit of patience, you can put something like this together for that $300 price tag. That's it for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.